Hi everyone, I'm Hannah with the Artmobile and welcome to our first virtual art class. Today we are going to be making blind contour portraits. So supplies that you'll need for today's project include some scrap paper just to practice on, as well as a heavier piece of paper to add watercolor to. Um, you're going to need a pencil, a Sharpie marker, um, a paintbrush, and a set of watercolors. Also don't forget to grab a jar or cup of water for your paints. So go ahead right now and gather your supplies and we'll get started. Okay, so the word contour describes the edges of a form. It's sort of like an outline, but with a little bit more detail. Um, in this picture, you can see we have a photo of a hand, then an outline, then the contour line. And here's another example. We have the subject, the outline, and the contour line. When artists create contour drawings, they must study their subject very closely. In fact, to make a realistic sketch, it's less about what your hands are doing and more about what your eyes are observing. Uh, so today, we're going to practice our observational skills with blind contour drawings. Um, it's not quite what it sounds like. You are not going to be drawing blindfolded, but you're going to create a drawing without looking at your paper. Um, and we do this so that we can really focus on our observation and study our subject that we're drawing. Um, when you do this, you're gonna go very slowly and you're going to draw the outlines of your subject with one long continuous line. You wanna try not to pick up your pencil so that you don't lose your place. And again, go slowly. So here you can see the portrait that we're going to start off drawing. And this green line is going to represent what my eyes are doing. Uh, simply moving around the portrait, trying to capture every detail. And as I'm observing this picture, I'm going to try to copy what I see with the movement of my hand and my pencil. So as I said, go slowly. Um, try to capture all the little details, eyebrows, eyelashes, nose, mouth, chin, ears, shirt, hair, um, and try not to lift up your pencil. This will help you to keep track of where you're at in this drawing. It's definitely a little bit of a brain exercise. It takes a little bit of practice to get used to. Also, don't be afraid to draw big. Uh, you want to use up your entire page if you need to. So when you're finished, you will end up with a portrait that looks probably a little bit silly, um, and that's okay. Remember, the point of today is more about practicing your observation skills, and you're going to end up with some pictures or portraits that look a little bit silly, and once we add color in a little bit, they're going to end up, end up just being really fun. So um, I'm going to go ahead and pause, and I'll let you try to capture this drawing. Okay, so once you've completed your first portrait, you can go ahead and try again. Uh, practice makes perfect, so here is your next drawing. Uh, again, use the same techniques. Go slowly, don't lift your pencil, and don't look at your paper. Uh, go ahead and pause your screen and work on this next one. All right, now we're going to just do one final practice portrait before we start on your heavy paper. So again, draw nice and big, use up your page, don't lift your pencil and try not to look at your paper. So now that you've finished with all three practice drawings, you can have a look and see how you did. Um, you may or may not have improved as you went along. Um, here are my three I'll just share with you all in a row. <laughs> a little silly and there's my last one. So next thing we're going to do is create um, another drawing just like we did before, but this time it's going to be on your heavier watercolor paper. And for this, I'm going to have you actually draw yourself. So uh, you can either use a photo of yourself, you can turn your uh, phone camera onto selfie mode and set it up, or if you have a mirror nearby, that's probably easiest. So same thing as before, you're going to stare at your reflection or your picture and very slowly draw the contour drawing of your face without looking at your paper. Um, so take your time with this, and once you are finished, we will talk about adding color. So go ahead right now and do that. So 
So I finished with my first self-portrait blind contour. It was pretty small on the page, so I decided to add a second drawing going the other direction. So feel free to do more than one. Also, you don't have to do a picture of yourself. You can draw someone else in your family or someone else maybe that you look up a picture of. Uh, so fill your page with at least one blind contour portrait. And the next step is going to be using your Sharpie marker to trace over the lines that you've already made. Now, if you want to uh, eliminate some of your lines, you don't have to trace over every single thing, but try to stay true to your blind contour portrait. This isn't necessarily the, the time where you have to fix your drawing. Remember, they're not going to look uh, realistic when you're done, they're more abstract. So use your Sharpie marker to trace over all of your lines, and then if you have any extra pencil marks to erase, you can do that. Um, the next thing we're going to do is add the watercolor. Also, if you'd like to add any other details like pattern in the background, you can do that. So to use your watercolor set, um, you'll need, as I said, a paintbrush and some water. If you've never used watercolors before, the first thing you need to do is add a little bit of water into each of your colors to activate the color. Um, after that, you can simply paint it onto your page um, using your brush and a little bit of water as you go. Also, you can use this lid up here as an extra paint palette to blend colors. So if you want to, for instance, um, make sort of a purplish pink, you can mix red and purple to get that color. A few other things to know about watercolor, if you want your color to be lighter, you'll add more water. And if you want it to be darker, you'll use less water and more paint. So experiment with your watercolors. You will notice that when you mix wet colors into places that are already wet, they're gonna blend together. So if you don't want areas to mix, try to make sure you let one area dry before you go near it or over top of it. Once your watercolor is dry, if you'd like to use maybe a darker color and paint more patterns on top, you could do that. Um, as you see in my example, I've added stripes and polka dots, so you are welcome to do that too. Just last thing I'm going to do is paint my background and for that I'm going to use a bunch of this green color. Alright, so that concludes our first project, the blind contour drawing. I hope you had fun with this one, and when you're finished, please be sure to share your photos with us. We'd love to see what you've created. You can find us on Instagram or Facebook at CBUSArtmobile. Uh, thanks, and stay tuned for next week.